Hi, this is Ed back again with another supporter video for everybody on Patreon, Steam it and Subscribestar. Thank you all for your support. Without it, these types of videos would not be possible as well as research into all kinds of different things. And today we're going into the mystery of the M cave. What is the M cave? Well, let's just really get right into it. So there was an individual called Kenny Veach, as you can see pictured here, which I've got some video of as well. His cell phone was found by an abandoned mine shaft back in November 2014. His body was never found, even though there was an extensive search. And of course, the scene was examined for any blood or any evidence of a fall down the mine shaft, but it's just assumed that he fell down there. However, other people are unsure because of his history. He was actually searching for something called the M cave. Now here is the uh, region apparently where he was headed. This of course is taken from a photograph or a still from a video, which I'll link in the description. All these videos will be linked in the description, which I'll play throughout this uh, video here. I do have some, a few coming up. So here is Kenny Veach's uh, YouTube channel. Now he captured his life in different parts, as you can see him here applying for Shark Tank, the uh, TV show, which is a, a remake of Dragon's Den in the UK. Here you can see one of his videos about the M Cave hike. He was searching for something called the M Cave. Now. He had found this cave before, but it frightened him. And since that, that happened to him, he went searching for it again. And we'll go into some of the further details. What's interesting about this is one of his last comments implied he was going searching for it once again, and then he disappeared. Now here's one cave explorer here, this person's channel, if you go to it, it'll be linked in the description, it has a lot of videos in regarding you know, outdoors activity, but mainly searching for the mysterious M cave. This person was really keen on actually finding it as well. Reason why I'm showing you that is I'm going to play the update where that individual claims he has found the cave. So regarding Kimmy Veach, before we get into any video and any other details, what we have to do is of course provide some context. So let's just go over what happened to him from this article here. So Kenny is said to have loved hiking. He disappeared in November 2014. He told his family that he was going on a short overnight trip into Sheep Mountains in Nevada. One month earlier, he had discovered a very strange cave in the Mojave Desert. He said the cave invoked a strange, possibly supernatural occurrence within him, and he wanted to explore it. Kenny wanted to show the world the unusual cave he had discovered, but he did not return home from his trip and he was never seen again. Before this disappearance, Kenny commented on his YouTube channel or YouTube uh, video claiming to have found a cave near Nellis's Air Force Base in Southern Nevada. Kenny was a, they said, an explorer and he entered every cave he came across. So we're going to get into that statement in a bit, but let's play the video from the unsuccessful search for the M cave from uh, Kenny Veach's channel as they get an idea of who he was and what he was doing. Well, here I am on my hike up here in the mountains north of Las Vegas. This is the uh, this is a canyon I just walked up in. Now you can't tell, but my truck is way out there by the mount mountains at the very, very end of this valley. Looks like. Don't I'm not going up there. And there's caves. There's actually caves all over the place up here. It's kind of a, it's a really cool place if you're in. If you want to come spelunking, this is the place to come spelunking, man. Canyons galore. I, I must have passed three canyons already. 
here's a little canyon or a crevice more like it <laughs> yeah a little bit of drop off um, I think I should be able to scale down these bushes but not with my camera in my hand <laughs> well I'm in the canyon and uh, I haven't found I haven't found the cave but look what I did find well I did not find the cave that is so weird I mean I thought for sure I was just gonna be able to find it um, I remember it being fairly easy uh, who knows but I am at the mouth of the canyon there I'm just now coming out and now I have to take a big left hand turn and walk all the way back to my truck which is a long hard trip because I've got a lot of up and down to do so as you can see there by that video he is literally in the middle of nowhere okay and if you're doing that you've got to have some kind of GPS even that isn't safe uh, because you hear about people going missing and their GPS data is all over the place but you've got to have some kind of uh, tracker or something so people know where you are but that's what happened sadly he vanished and his body was never found did he fall down the mine shaft well I don't know but I do know one thing when I read this I had an idea and of course when you look at the location it is rather strange here is the last comment he left before he went missing this ain't nothing I am a long distance hiker one time during one of my hikes out by Nellis Air Force Base I found a hidden cave the entrance to the cave was shaped like a perfect capital M. I always entered, the, entered every cave I find, but as I began to enter this particular cave, my whole body began to vibrate. The closer I got to the entrance, the worse the vibration, vibrating became. Suddenly I became very scared and hightailed it out of there. That was the strangest things, or one of the strangest things that ever happened to him. Now, there's two things in regarding that. First, the location. Okay, this is not only near an Air Force base, this is near three Air Force bases, one of which is the famous Area 51. So let's have a look at a map here. Area 51 is north of this. Oh, sorry, you'd have to flip the map upside down and then you'd have to go uh, uh, a bit over that, I think. I'd have to get the exact uh, coordinates. But basically, Area 51, as you can see there, isn't up here where it's pointing. Area 51 is here. Now, you have two Air Force bases, or the Nellis Air Force Base here, and then you have this Air Force Base here, and you have another Air Force Base as well. And this is where Kenny is, okay? Kenny is searching literally in the middle of all this. Here's one researcher putting it into a map here. Here's the city of Las Vegas. Nellis, etc. So via the map before you'd have to adjust it and turn it around and go to put it in the right direction. And this is where he was searching. So you've got all this Air Force activity, all of which these are very famous Air Force bases. And I have no doubt, no doubt in my mind whatsoever, that they have underground facilities. That's just what bases do. If they're responsible in their strategic outlook, because of course you want to protect them against nuclear weapons and things like that. So I'm not even saying it's a conspiracy in regard to building underground underneath an Air Force base of those locations. It's totally just what they would do. Okay, so this place would have, in my opinion, no doubt about it, underground facilities. Now, one thing I couldn't check was the Starvia data because it's changed in regarding the heat sink data, which was linked leaked to the media in regarding the fact that apparently they never turned off their GPS coordinates. Now, there's two ways to look at that, and I've covered that in the past. Number one, it was done on purpose in order to create camouflage around the real locations by leaking false ones and then claiming it was a mistake. Or it was incompetence and that really happened. If it's incompetence and that really happened, then there are underground bases everywhere in the world, including Antarctica. Of course, if it is an illusion, a fictional camouflage that was linked to the media, was well, leaked by Stavia. They never, the soldiers apparently, allegedly, according to it, never put their data to private. 
So you've got two alternatives there. Either way, there are underground bases. Now, let's just jump back to his comment here for a second. He talks about his body beginning to vibrate, him starting to feel afraid. Now, what does that sound like to anybody? Microwave energy or weapon technology. First of all, you have it on cruise ships. It's not a fantasy or science fiction. They have it on cruise ships. They have it on Hummers. They used it in Iraq. They've been using it a long time. They use it and talk about it in regarding crowd control dispersal. When it hits your skin, okay, it can make you feel you're, like you're on fire. It depends upon the wavelengths. One symptom is sickness and also a feeling of being afraid okay and your body vibrating now if you have an underground base let's say with a specific doorway of entrance you know and i'm not saying this would be the main entrance way if it was it would be huge okay and there would likely be you'd meet some kind of uh person in tan camouflage long before you got there and it would actually be considered military land okay it wouldn't be this public land this might be something as simple as a, a, a you know a secondary chamber that goes out okay secondary chamber maybe for airflow maybe for all types of things but it has a certain sensor on it when animals including human beings come too close it flips on and pushes out this high frequency microwave wave and makes those animals sick and afraid they leave that's just what occurred to my mind seems to have a lot of these hallmarks in it but then again who knows what it could be? The world is a very strange place and people go missing and experience very strange things all the time. What's weird about this is this are, these are the similar symptoms that it seemed like a lot of people experience when they're close to something very unusual. Okay, For instance, you hear about it a lot in the missing 411 cases, uh, etc. And I've gone over those where the person will feel frightened or afraid or like something bad was happening. It's also symptomatic of what you hear alien abductees talk about. When they're laying in bed, their body begins to vibrate. They feel very afraid. Maybe that's got to do with the signatures. If UFOs are real and not some kind of psychological camouflage that these uh, machinery admit, okay, in terms of waves and things like that. People are naturally scared of the unknown, though. Everyone is. I mean, if you see faces in the darkness and, you know, when you're a kid and you look at your father's hat. My father used to wear a Ford <laughs> fedora hat. <laughs> he used to look like it was in the 1950s. But it was hanging on the wall, okay, and, you know, he has coat on it. It looks like a man in the shadows. It does. The shadows hit it. It looks like a person. And you just look at it in the darkness and you go... And you feel afraid and that's what people do uh, that's what they do so this case mimics a lot of different things that you see in missing 411 at least the survivors testimony because a lot of people of course never come back so let's have a look at the man that claims to have found the m-shaped cave and what he found now this is a channel here this will be link linked in the description uh, on patreon subscribe star and uh, etc so you can watch that at your leisure here is his channel, just for reference purposes, some of his videos. So you can see M Cave is at the top of the list. There he's going with someone else, another person, search for the M Cave. And his last one from about a month ago, it's actually longer than that, was the MK cover up found. Okay. So he's saying basically the M Cave was covered up and he found the location. I'm not sure if he really did uh, find it, but apparently he uh, did. In this, at the end of the video, it actually feels very sick. The reason why I'm mentioning this is after he found the cave, afterwards, he started to feel sick and unwell. Okay? Now, the cave has said the entrance has been covered up. I don't know if that is uh, true. It'd be very hard to tell. Basically, if you have an air shaft for an underground base, it's going to look like rocks. Okay? It's designed to look like rocks. It'd be very hard to tell where it is. You'd have to be right up close to it. And not only look like rocks, it probably is a bunch of rocks. And then behind it is the piping system. You'd probably be only be able to tell by some kind of gauge by holding in front of it, finding out if there's an airflow in and out. And of course, you'd get that from a normal uh, shaft anyway. 
But if it was airflow for an underground bunker, you'd expect more airflow back and forward, uh, etc. Now, let's just really have a look at these and then we'll play the video of the person that said he found the cave. So this is what it looks like, what he said he found there. And he states that the rocks themselves are an, an unusual. That these rocks here, you see on the right, do not match these rocks here. And there's a straight line, as you can see down there, that looks like it's got some sealant in it. What he states is he believes these rocks were just thrown over it and it looks unnatural. Now, I don't know if that's true, and it would be impossible to tell anyway, but it does look quite unusual. Though, these types of volcanic rock, and these look like, uh, this looks volcanic here, a type of volcanic rock, uh, you know, old, old kind of rock, uh, you know, just splits anyway, okay? I'm not sure, I'm not a geologist, so I can't tell. Here is one unusual thing, you can see the formation from the side, you've got almost these straight lines here. But again, rock can crack in lines. Let's have a look what he had to say in this video. All right, so we got a couple things going on here. First off, there's a there's a hole right here. I mean, there's like a Okay, there's a so This and this aren't really matching up. They're really two different colors. That that doesn't make any sense. Either really does this and this, but it's a little closer. Still, it's kind of suspect. And then you got down here, where there's like a sealant, it seems. It's just, it's just too flat right here where it hits this. And then just like in that cave over there beside me, you have this sort of orange lichen stuff that's kind of growing in the crack. Why does this look so, so like manufactured? It looks like there was some kind of something smeared here. Or maybe this was heated up to melt or something. I don't know. Let me get the stick out. Okay, so... You have the hole here. You have this piece that doesn't match this piece. Or this piece doesn't match this piece. Somehow they're together here, though. And then down here. You have this seam that's running. It's almost like this is a like a foundation almost. And then this is this is all like a straight line and it's got this white stuff in here. It's sort of like a sealant. It looks close. Maybe. I don't think so though. And then you have this piece. Look at it. There's a hole. There's a gap in there. It's not, it's just like, it looks like someone just dropped it here and it's resting on the ground. And then I'm looking at this right here. What the heck is that? So what he goes on to say, and I've got a video coming up, is this rock wall here, and this to me is, is strange. Now this is showing sediment that's fallen off, but when he goes down to show in the next video, which I'll play in a second, it shows that there's nothing on the ground. Now that is quite odd. But there is the cave on the outside, apparently a cave which people are talking about. I don't know if that's the M-shaped cave, but... It looks like it could be. It looks like it would be something that someone would say looks like an M-shaped cave, except the front has been covered up, and that's what he's stating. They have this very straight edge here. Now that is kind of unusual. Uh, and especially it does look like when he uh, closes, 
goes closer, it looks like it has there's some kind of sealant or something there, some kind of uh, you know cement sealant or a derivative thereof of some type of rock sealant that's been placed along there for purposes I don't know. Like I said, it wouldn't be unusual to come across probably something that's an artificial front for some bunker or air shaft because bunkers are real. The military is spending like half a billion or I think a billion dollars now retraining its soldiers in the United States for fighting in underground facilities. I mean, they're directly budgeting for those types of wars, so obviously they're real. Let's have a little look at what else he says here. By the way, just a just one thing, if you when people are taking photos of things they find, I always see in all these videos as they move the camera around really fast, like they expect it to capture everything like a film camera might. Uh, you know, back in the days, you know, with the reel in it and the the, the can and all that. Obviously, that's not how digital works because it takes a few seconds in order to adjust the focus. So all you get when you're moving around fast usually is something that's out of focus. So if you ever find an anomaly, hold the camera on it, move very slowly across it and take your time. Let the camera focus. I just, I just got to get that out of my system after years of watching these types of things. But hey, people do the best they can with what they got at the time. So that's just what it is. Let's have a look at a little look at the rest of this video here where he's talking about the rock fall. It looks like it just broke right off here. Because look, all this, all this is, is like falling rock. So something fell off of here recently, right here. It, this is not weathered the way this is. So, and then I'm looking on the ground right here. Right here. Where's the rock? Where's the rock that fell from right here? This big spot. It should be right here. It's not there. It's not there. This is all... It looks kind of normal, even though this, this too looks like it was maybe manufactured, but not as much. My point is, something fell off, broke off of right here. Something clearly broke off. It should be right here. It should just be laying right here on the ground, a big giant rock but there isn't anything there. Instead, you have, you have this. Look at that. This whole piece right here. That looks like, like I said, pretty much this piece right here. looks like it could have been right there. So just something you could look for just in terms of an examination with something like this is you go look at the plants and you just scratch around them to see how long the roots have taken into the actual soil. Because if you were building an artificial front like that, you'd take the plants out and then you'd replant them, but the roots might not be as long. This might seem boring, but you could actually figure out what type of plant it is, how long it would grow or take to root itself into the soil. You can make a measurement as to how long, if it's artificially being replanted. Okay, that's just an idea. Very, of course, there's a lot of details. Now, that thing he said about the rock really was unusual to me. Very unusual. Where is the actual rock itself? So these are just some things that people are talking about. It does look like an unusual formation, but as I said, I'm not a geologist, and rocks can formulate in unusual ways. But there are a number of these oddities. Like on the left, when he's talking about where is what fell on the ground. If all this testimony is real and not manufactured, um, but <laughs> this line here, which is saying you always got to consider. I'm not knocking this uh, gentleman here, but hey, you got to consider people can manufacture stuff. So let's have a look at what happened when he was round this cave and what happened uh, a bit later. Something got me. 
So there's him talking about it. Obviously, he's not feeling very well in that particular thing there. Now, if you ever find these locations, what you need is you need to have a, you know, a bunch of sensors like a, uh, you know, an EMF meter, um, you know, a, a thing that can measure all types of different waves. And you need to have it at the cave and you need to have some equipment. Now, that might seem like overkill, but that'll tell you if there's an artificial uh, wave signature in the air. Uh, rem ways in which uh, the military communicates, such as high frequency radios, etc., like that, or let's say there's some microwave weaponry, you might be able to pick up uh, things. Okay, so that is another idea. Of course, you'd have to haul that stuff out there, and this is a remote location, so that's a lot of kit in order to carry, okay? So, I, it's, I'm an armchair critic. So after the job has been done, that's when my job starts, you see? Because I make a list and tell you what you should have done. Okay, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. That's, that's ridiculous. But I'm just saying, you know, for the record, you know, you need some equipment if you're going to go do this. Probably need three people. Okay, and then you distribute the equipment evenly throughout you, okay, as well as your provisions. Sadly, that's just what happened to Kenny Veach. Not a lot else is known except for one strange detail, which I'll report on in a moment. Maybe it's not strange. He just disappeared without a trace after finding this M cave, apparently. Now, looking at his videos, he didn't look like the kind of person that would make something up, but then I don't know. He did come, afore, uh, come across as, uh, you know, very excitable and, you know, very energetic um, and interested in caves in general. And of course, that's what happened. He went missing. That's a photo of just some generic cave. I guess they had the photographer walk out the street and go take one. But here's something interesting is that uh, person that went and searched for these caves pointed out in one of his videos he stated apparently that the military itself is now trying to take this land, which was public land, uh, or where you could go hiking and things. They're trying to take that back. Okay, well, not back, but they're trying to acquire it uh, for unknown reasons, I guess, because there's something that they want there. Um, and it's going to be 300,000 acres, apparently. Now, I tracked down the article at which this individual was citing it from. I couldn't find a date on it, okay? I couldn't find anything. It's actually from the Sierra Club and a speech regarding talking points about the wildlife and, and the desert, etc. Uh, and it's some talking points taken from that, but there's no date. So I couldn't really cross-reference exactly to say, is this something that happened after Kenny Veach went missing? Or is this something that happened 30 years ago? Is that speech from then? But here's what uh, is stated in the actual speech itself. The Nevada Test Range and Training Range in southern Nevada is currently comprised of 2.9 million acres. The Air Force has complete flyover access to the entire desert, wildlife, uh, refuge and more. So all this location the military comes and goes obviously, I mean that's what they do. A uh, proposal to take primary control of an additional 300,000 acres of the refuge will comprise critical wildlife habitat, erase popular outdoor recreation sites, and is also totally inappropriate, says the Sierra Club. Now, don't get me into that uh, particular organization because they are a rabbit hole of their own making. But it is an interesting case in regarding the M cave. So when I came across that, I thought that uh, you might be interested in that strange cave, although a lot of the information is quite dry. Is that the mysterious cave? What happened to Kenny Veach? What happened to him indeed? Just another name from Missing 411 of these mysterious disappearances. Now, if you wanted to disappear someone, if you wanted to disappear someone, but you don't want them ever being searched for ever again, you leave their cell phone exactly what happened to Kenny Veach beside a mine shaft. Or you throw them down the mine shaft, okay? But that is basically, when you see that, no one's going to go down to an abandoned mine shaft to search for a body unless that person uh, is very famous, uh, in which, like uh, Jesse Smollett, or Smollett uh, I keep on getting mixed up with Dave Chappelle's version of it, how he's referring to his name in the fr some kind of, you know, French joke. 
the fact is, is unless you're someone like that, no one's going to look for him. Okay, and that's a sad thing. I mean, there's going to be a search party, but they're not going to get the rappel lines and start going down an abandoned, dangerous mine shaft. Okay, you might end up losing another person. I've been down, by the way, in some of the very deep mine shafts in New Zealand. In fact, I've told those stories before, but when I was about, I think, maybe 14, I was going down into the darkest ones, you know, me and my next door neighbor. And there was this one time when we came across and we were really deep down, like an hour. You would have to be walking an hour and moving across down the shaft for an hour. There's a lot of gold mining towns in New Zealand got down to this old rusted wagon, you know, that uh, I guess it was called a rail car. And it was had these boxes of dynamite in it, still there with dust on them, gelatin, you know, the, the, the really explosive kind. And I reached out to grab one and he goes, yeah, hold on. What are you doing? Step back, you know, and then we kind of took a different way because obviously we could, I could have blown us all to pieces. I was only 14 years old. I didn't know any better. One of the many times my life was saved by a stranger. Okay, Well, not a stranger, but someone else. In the meantime, of course, thank you all for your support. I hope you enjoyed the video. In the meantime, make sure to go out, do your own research aside for yourselves. All links in the description so you can check those out at your leisure and start down a rabbit hole of your own making. In the meantime, though, whatever you do, thank you all for your support. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and have a video in a few more days. Here, another supporter video on another topic. Whatever you decide, stay safe, and I'll see you all later.